order. Board, and then we'll live stream it so that we don't have to go back and load it. Is that, Julie, I think only you could do it because you're the host. Yeah, it's not enabling me to do it right now. So we are recording. I think we should go ahead and get started. Um, let me pull up. Um, and I know we are starting a few minutes late. Um, so we'll see what we can get through. We're also a pretty small group. Um, but if folks have any, you know, five minutes on the other end, uh, we might need it. Um, so welcome everyone. This is the third meeting of the Government Transition Advisory Committee Work Plan Work Group. Today is Monday, October 9th, and we're going to be here from one to two-ish. Uh, my name is Julia Meyer. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Engagement and Community Participation Manager for the transition. Next slide, please. So just really briefly, um, I go over some Zoom logistics. This meeting is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be posted on the city's transition webpage under past meetings and events. For today's meeting, we have closed captioning available. To access closed captioning, you can click on the CC button on the bottom right of your screen. For committee members that are here, that are here please change your chat settings to everyone so folks listening in today can follow along. And please remember that the meeting chat is part of the public record of this meeting. For community members listening in, the Zoom Q&A feature is available and you can submit questions or comments through the Q&A function. We may not answer questions, uh, all of them during the meeting, but they also become part of the meeting record. Uh, today's meeting, we're not gonna be taking verbal public comment but you can give public comment at any time through our comment form online on the website or by emailing us at transition at portlandoregon.gov. We also have a full committee meeting one week from tomorrow, so Tuesday, October 17th. And you can sign up right now on our website if you wanna give verbal public comment at that meeting. Next slide. So pretty simple agenda today. Um, this is the third meeting of, of the work plan work group. And really we're gonna spend, you know, the vast majority of the time reviewing and editing the work plan. Um, and then we're gonna conclude with some time to prepare for next week's presentation to the full committee. So as a reminder, right, we meet as a full committee uh, a week from tomorrow, which means by end of day tomorrow, I'll send out all the meeting materials to the committee as well as post them online. So we wanna have a good kind of draft for the committee's consideration that'll go out end of day tomorrow. And I think with that, we can probably take down this um, deck and I'm just gonna turn it over to June to kind of introduce the reviewing of the work plan portion. No. Thanks, Julia. Um, June Rea, she, her pronouns. Um, in terms of how we're going to start the review, we'll kind of go section by section. I'm going <clears> to <throat> share my screen. And what we're hoping to do is get to a place where um, we have enough, dis you know, enough uh, discussion for each of the sections. And um, what Julia and I are going to do, we're going to take notes um, and then make, make, um, those suggested changes that you all have. And we're gonna take a little bit of liberties to kind of help with um, the brevity of the, the work plan just so it makes it easier to read and go through and track what we're trying to do. Noting that you all will get another, um, you know, you'll get another week or so uh, providing comments um, on the work plan before it gets approved. I think we're aiming for um, the October 17th, wait, 17th, we would approve it, no, November 1st, on the November 1st meeting. Okay, so let's, let me share the work plan. And Money, I will kind of talk us through where we are so that you can follow along um, on your computer. Um, so just want to get the thumbs up from Zach, Bill, and Money that that works. We'll go through each section. Julie and I will take notes, and then we'll kind of 
move forward each way. Okay. Oh, it seems like maybe Bill is having some internet issues because it's coming on and off. But yes, money. I just, uh, sorry, I'm uh, very unorganized right now. I, uh, that sounds like a great plan. Do you, June, just have like, um, since we only have 45 minutes, have you kind of sorted out how many minutes we're going to do on each section? I do not have time after this. Okay, let's. So I have a hard stop at two. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, let's see, we have a, B, C, D, F, G, seven. Seven times. Let's try to do four minutes for each section. I think some of them will move a lot faster too. Just All as right. a, some guardrails. So the conversation, I mean, I know there's just me and Zach right now. Um, so, but trying yeah. to rep, rep, the, rep the group um, and just keep our thoughts succinct so we can go on to the next section. Okay, let's do that. All right, so I'm going to kick us off with section A because Mavi and Destiny couldn't make it. And so, oops, what did I do that? Uh, this has left been left largely unchanged, the community education and engagement, um, except where we added this piece of form for, for completing tasks, noting that most of these are the outside education engagement events, so they wouldn't take place at GTAC unless we're doing sort of the reflection, sort of like we did last time. Um, and so that's kind of reflected here that the GTAC meetings will do the monthly engagement updates and then have committee updates in terms of what's going around um, coming out in terms of the engagement opportunities available, as well as um, other things that hopefully y'all can like amplify in your networks if you're interested in. And I think the last thing to know is when I was looking at this, I felt like things like th number three, for example, and five, number three, amplify transition engagement, uh, opportunities and provide feedback on community education and engagement strategies could kind of be combined. So that's um, one change that I would want to make is reducing the number to four and, you know, making it more concise. All right, Zach, what do you got? So I think this is a bold comment of yours, but number one is actually reflected in two places. So it's also reflected in our evaluation. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We should choose one or the other most likely. I think okay, my, preference, my preference would be to have it um, probably here because I think the measurements are more not just our committee, but it's this is more of a community engagement. And Yeah, I think that's a good call. We can always reference it as in like, this will be part of our evaluating the transition and we can look back to the evaluation of the engagement plan. I would also just add that I'm fine with that condensing three and five together, packaging it. Okay, cool. And then when I looked back, I didn't see um, anything of note from Mavi or Destiny on this one. So I think if y'all don't have anything else, I think we can move on. Okay. I think maybe- Julia? Oh. Oh. Yes, I sorry. we. We do have still two minutes on this item. So if I may, real quick, um, because I know I missed um, your first couple of meetings. Also, June, I'm taking notes. So oh, cool. you don't need to do that too. But so I'm a little confused what three is. Like, is it GTAC members using their own emails, social media relationships to share with community members engagement opportunities in the transition? Yeah, exactly. Okay, thanks. You know, I was just gonna think, um, thinking we should add timeline, uh, the beginning of our consulting, the city's consulting work with United Way. The fact that it starts in January, I think is important. To oh, I see. Because there's going to be some coordination that also is going to happen and there'll be more people sort of advancing this community education work. That makes sense. Great. That sounds good. All right, I'm gonna move us down to our next section. And so the rest of these are a little bit different because they're more of 
more likely things we're doing in subcommittees or the full committee, because these are more of the advising roles. So, um, oh, Bill and Terry are both not here, Bill, uh, but let's see. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanted to point you all to is the goal. So one of the things we talked about at the last meeting was that um, engaging and support employees was pretty, it's pretty broad and could also mean a lot of things. And so the way that GTAC was, a way that we could define it for GTAC is really around the reviewing and providing recommendations around strategy versus being the ones to do this work. And so the suggestion here is to, um, redefine the engage and support employees into reviewing and providing recommendations related to employment or into engagement strategies. Um, and then and then the second thing I wanted to point out before I hear what y'all think. Um, so this is something we talked about, Zach, before that um, where you had suggested, is there a place where we can call out um that GTAC could be a place to receive like uh employee concerns if possible. Um and so one of the things there that I, I think we should discuss this a little bit more is that there currently is actually a pathway for anonymous feedback to be received from the city and that we've seen a lot of employees use that track. So I guess here I'm wondering if being able to get at the heart of what you're saying is when we're doing employee engagement review is making sure that there are anonymous feedback tracks, people are utilizing what's there versus kind of asking um, committee members to kind of hold uh, employee concerns just because they're just, you know, this would, that would focus more on the direct engaging and supporting employees versus this move to looking at the larger strategy of how we're engaging employees. So I think those two sort of changes to think about or give comments on um, are, are kind of intertwined. So I think that's probably um, it for major things for this section. Uh, okay, so just to be clear, your recommendation is to say GTAC's role is directing and informing city staff of the anonymous uh, tip line or not like an anonymous feedback way um, that the city has already set up and established. I think so it'd I think be useful. I mean, I generally think it would be useful if we're, um, if city employees felt that it was not being internally reviewed only, um, which my understanding would be that it would be a, only an inter uh, internal um, internally reviewed anonymous input. Right, I'm going to correct my suggestion because I don't quite understand your um, uh, the last thing you said about stuff being reviewed internally. Uh, just in case the clarification helps, that is that um, the suggestion here is to change the goal that instead of engaging and supporting employees, what GTAC is doing is really helping to advise on the strategies we're using to engage employees. And so to your comment to address some of the things you were saying about having employees to be able to have a good engagement sort of pathway, um, one of the things that GTEC will do instead is to look at how we are engaging employees and, and then, um, for example, how we have like an anonymous feedback sort of pathway and make sure that you know, ask us questions like, is that being used? How did you address those comments versus like holding concerns yourselves from individuals, kind of going up a step higher of like strategy? Yeah, I guess it's something we could revisit later, right? Like, I ultimately don't know if the yeah. anonymous input is, you're saying it's being used, but I don't know if it's satisfying that is, you know, um, it's like having an ombuds person that's still reporting into a structure that may be stifling that feedback and or interpreting it in um, a way that's not really constructive. Uh, and so I, I'm just thinking GTAC's role could be writ large city employees are also the community members of Portland. And so um, 
they have a way of providing feedback through GTAC as well. Uh, and then, you know, offering that as a suggestion. Got it. Right. Hi, Bill. Hi, sorry for the technical difficulties. My iPad, it, it kept repeating, this is being recorded. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything, so thank you. Um, just catching up on this conversation, I, I think essentially this is a question for you, June and Julia. Um, if GTAC offers to be a sounding board for employees, are we interfering with what you and others are trying to do and developing good rapport with the employees? I mean, if we're, if we're potentially setting up a different sounding board, is that interference, competition? Uh, are we taking on a task that might become considerable? Julia, do you have a insight there um i don't know if i have insight but i i think it's an interesting question um i didn't think about gtech and in, in the way i think maybe i hear zach suggesting but i wonder just to keep us on time we're now a minute over uh with this one that you know maybe this is one of probably a series of questions that this work group might want to bring to the full committee to have a conversation about. I think that works for me. Great. And, and Bill, I see a head nod there. All I right. It's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> so then here we'll, we'll, um, We'll update the goal. We'll also propose number task number three, B three here as a question to folks if they think this is um, what GTAC should be doing. All right, I'm gonna move us on to the next section then. This is uh, more of a the meeting section. So since uh, Zach and Lenny, you are both here. Zach, do you wanna go through this one? Sorry, just with Lenny, I think because you, you're, you're screening. Side yeah, money. If you if you want to, I mean, you can see it on the screen. People. Yeah, sorry, I don't have my video on because you'll just see my forehead because I have my phone, <laughs> so I can see my face. <laughs> um, but I, I am, I am here. Um, I have not. Uh, I sadly touched something on my computer that made this work plan go away. So that's why I'm looking at it on my phone and. Um, have not seen the updates. So Zach, if you could um, start us off, that would be great. So I can just review this quickly. Sure, sure. Um, I, think, I don't know if this has changed between our second and this uh, meeting, but um, question to add is a uh, future task. Should we provide recommendations for the role of, um, and responsibility for future district coalitions? Um, and then request for time release of an RFP for district coalitions. Um, and then I think the five um, here was assist in the creation of a recommended schedule for the first couple of months of the new council. It's pretty aspirational, but I think something we could um, try to, to publicize or work towards. And then request a presentation to GTAC or slides and report on justification for each set of code changes um, that represents city thinking and serves as content that the public can react to. My worry is that if it's not through GTAC, it's going to end up being the only time people hear about it is a first reading. And it's a really quick whiplash for folks of, of the potential changes. And I know. We just talked a little bit about this um, uh, kind of in our um, opening of the meeting and thinking about, you know, the, the effort of revision, revising um, code in the chapters is really to make sure that um, it reflects what the new charter language is and it's not really making policy decisions, but I think it's really important that we make that clear through exercise. 
of, of you know just announcing that there's these changes coming but this is like again a reflection of what the charter says and it's not looking at policy um i think we should add uh in important dates like uh the remaining quarters tbd or like the schedule is is forthcoming um and then we can maybe make updates to this um, document so it's more living um but those are the changes money thanks zach um i'm sorry could you talk more about the district coalitions yeah well i think it's mainly that my listening in on the presentations um from last week that the the role is still pretty ambiguous and needs to be sorted out in how council is going to leverage the district coalitions um, in the future as kind of a engagement arm of the council offices. That's kind of what I heard, but I, you know, it'd be really helpful to continue to have that conversation um, and understanding, you know, if, if their role is to be an engagement arm that reflects onto the budget for the staffing that the council offices might need for engagement. And then the, the RFP piece is they're um, going to start fresh essentially with the four district coalitions instead of the seven that we have currently. And so <clears throat> they're gonna have a new RFP that there's not a really clear timeline right now. It's like maybe January, maybe February when it's going to be released. And there's not a lot of information about expectations at this time because I don't think the RFP has been written. So it would be us mainly being in a role, keeping an eye on this development as a really important facet of council operations, community engagement writ large, and advocating to ensure that the city is um, being proactive in its engagement, its outreach, and its kind of vision setting for community input. Okay, thanks for that background information. Um, I think that all looks fine to me. Thanks, Zach, for getting it started. And I'm sure we're coming to time. The only, I can't see the comments, but remembering what I wrote, I just, I think it would be, um, and maybe this is an addendum to the work plan and it doesn't need to be here, but I'm curious about the specific codes and how um, it relates the change. So when I read emergency code, I'm not, I don't feel an urgency to describe that code to the community and how it relates to their government changing. I, I understand that all these codes that were listed and thanks for doing that, June, are related to um, the new charter. I just want to make sure we're picking out uh, the code that's most relevant to community in this change and not losing them in the weeds and policy wonkiness for the sake of just being transparent. We want to have, we have a lot of messages to relay to the community and I just want to be uh, thoughtful in, in what those messages are and making impact. Thanks, Lenny. Um, before kind of summarizing what I heard and moving on to the next piece, Bill, I want to get to your comment. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to ask, uh, I may have missed the definition or I wasn't hearing well. What is a district coalition? Is that a community within a district or is a district coalition a coalition of more than one district or both? So the district coalition is like how, how we have district coalition offices right now. There's seven of them that neighborhood associations work with and they kind of provide a lot of different services, but also are a direct way of engagement for for that district that, you know, the community members that live in that district. And so this was the change that we were made aware of with uh, the IDC draft that civic life was going to move towards seven district coalitions to four that map onto the existing geographic districts that are now created. Thank you, Zach. Great. 
Um, so for for this section, um, one of the bigger things that I saw that we probably should clean up is just to make sure it, the language kind of holds in together better. For example, the recommendations for the role and responsibility of future district coalitions, for like that kind of feels like generally how we think about um, sort of the future of 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 um, how the how council districts offices like how how I guess sorry how um the role of sort of um I guess things post transition or I guess post like in January 2025 how those are going to look and so just the flag that we'll probably condense this and add like you'll see the district coalitions piece within it and then I think it'll probably be something we should flag for folks as a a topic just because of the conversation GTAC had last time around um, supporting sort of neighborhood associations implicitly. Um, and I think then the other piece here is just to note that um, what I'm hearing from both of you, Zach and Money, is when we're also looking at the code updates, not only to have a schedule to for transparency's sake, but also take a lens of what's going to impact community the most and kind of prioritize um, engagement around around those. So. Those are the, the the improvements we'll take into the next draft. Okay. All right, cruising through to D. I like this one, so it's a little more straightforward. Bill, this is you. Do you wanna talk about this one if you have any changes or what you think of where this landed? Oh, and you're a mute. Oh, no, th th thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't uh, propose uh, changes, but I'm certainly open uh, to them. Um, so I think we, you know, I, yeah, I'm not proposing changes. So I think we're, we're okay here. I then do want to flag one thing because it kind of relates to the coaching this conversation is that um, when talking to James from elections office, we were talking about, okay, how the voter subcommittee, maybe some proposals for how this would happen um, in regards to the election codes update. So currently um, there is the auditor's office administrative rules that folks that, you know, that the public comment is happening on right now. Um, and then there are rules in, from title two um, that are going to go before city council and Mar before March 2025. And so where we kind of saw the election codes update, uh, you know, the advising on the election code would be to do something similar where we talk about what's happening, but we wouldn't use the subcommittee as a place to kind of dissect the code. We would actually focus on things around citywide um, voter education, et cetera. So just to note that it will be there, but you will see it here and offline via email of like, we'll let you know what's happening, um, but won't engage directly into, the idea isn't to really kind of pour through that code. And so I wanted to flag that and see if that feels like a thing we need to discuss with the committee, or it feels like it tracks with how we want to focus. Uh, June, does offline mean not not a GTAC committee meeting? Right. Basically, yeah. It would be like a, maybe we'd mention an email or a way for you to engage in a public comment period, but we wouldn't spend uh, precious GTAC time on like a big presentation or advising kind of session. So I'm going to hold my breath a little bit. Anybody have any comments if they think we should elevate this up or it feels okay to just leave it without calling it out? I don't have a comment to that. Okay, well, uh, any last comments on section no, E? No, I was just going to say, I think your suggestion is fine, June. And I have one other thing to add that's not okay. related to this. What, I think we're ready for your thing. Um, the, uh, okay, I'm gonna try to do this from memory. 
because I want to look at your faces when I'm talking. I, um, sorry, Bill, I'm having some technical difficulties myself today. Uh, I think in the goals section, though it was pulled from the transition plan and it's in orange, it says that we will serve as the lead. I don't think we're going to serve as the lead. Um, so I, I see the, um, whoever the vendor was at the meeting last week, I see them as the lead. And we should, I, I think I had a comment in there, I think in the section around um, their scope, whatever their scope of work is, this section should mirror that. And it, and it might, um, again, apologies if that, I'm sure that comment was addressed and I haven't seen it. Um, so that would be the only, Thing that um, not to take away from our role, I just want to be realistic. I think um, they they said they wanted to lean on us a lot. Um, again, apologies for missing last week's meeting, but in listening to the recording, I heard a lot of that. They had a lot of ideas. Uh, Zach asked great questions and, hey, can you give us talking points? Um, I don't, we're not creating that per se. I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, so that's the only pushback that I would say and in, in softening. I mean, if we want to say co-lead, we can say that if it doesn't feel right to take out lead. But I, I do think the verb, oh, it struck out. Whoops. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm just making a suggestion, Money. I was making a suggestion. I agree with you. I do think it seems... Um, not like the role that we should be playing. I mean, we're, we're the previous bullet is support the citywide uh, voter education campaign. I think support, and then we can maybe add amplify. And yeah. leadership is kind of a, they can come to us because we're helping with the amplification, but we're not driving it. We're not generating content necessarily, especially not around for ranked choice voting. Okay, I think we can yes. have a Oh, June, if I may, yeah, I, I agree with the co uh, the comment, so we could change it to help to educate or support education and engagement. Great, I think that's good. All right, so then I'm going to move us on to the next section. I did have I did okay. have one addition. I realized it was a bit of a overreach because I was not tasked with this, but I was reading. It's like a strike through the second eight. <laughs> um on your screen but this okay. support educating the community about ranked choice voting and roles and responsibilities of new electeds i was um there's a point in here that i wanted to try to make which uh is general voter education not really just ranked choice voting and i made it at our last gtech meeting which is there's a there's a niche that i think that gtech can have and work in partnership co-developing with like League of Women Voters or other organizations that are interested in developing resources that assist the public in understanding who is doing what, like what are, where are the authorities, like how can resources be, uh, like how to um, reach out <laughs> essentially, because like they're not going to reach out to a commissioner in charge anymore if there's a service delivery concern. And so I was thinking this could be, you know, a task or a deliverable within voter education, um, but working to educate about the, the civic piece of the puzzle, not just how to, to submit a vote properly, but to like, properly engage with the city in the future. Yeah, like the really like a civic education piece. And so I think then maybe that's something that we can put in the things to flag for the group discussion since it's a little bit out of general scope, but then it might be something of interest to everyone to add that. Yeah, that's fine with me. I just wanted to make sure to call it out because um, that was something I added. Great. All right, and so then this is the next one. I do want to acknowledge Zach because this one um, it was a little bit of mishmash of like transition project budget and city budgeting. 
um, the tasks that you put in number three and number four were more around city budgeting. Um, and it seemed like that was a lot where the interest was. So I think just right off the bat, I think a proposal here is that number one and number two, which talks about the transition project budget. So just the, you know, just what we're doing here kind of goes into definitions of measures of, of success where we're looking at is the transition effective, is engagement going well, et cetera. And then we would take number three and number four, which is around the new city city budgeting processes and taking a look at those um, and changing, right? And so changing the section to the city budgeting versus the transition project budget. So um, I see you nod your head and I'd like to hear yeah. what you think. Yeah, I saw the change. I think it makes sense um, because honestly, this is gonna be one of the key ways for people to engage on future city and um, city services and policy. Um, and I'd like to see the city be more engaged in the city budgeting process. So um, I had added, um, just gonna read it out for, for money, just in case, uh, point three and four. So three is assist in the outreach and engagement efforts related to the budget modeling what effective community engagement looks like in the future structure, co-develop information resources that are understandable to the general public. And then four is recommend tools or additional resources to improve engagement around the budget and partner with other communities. Um, thinking like tools such as like Tableau or like other like ways of engagement that doesn't come in a 1200 page city budgeting book that no one but myself probably looks at very often. That'd be the first time any government would be able to offer that. So that'd be a huge win. Yeah, I'll adjust. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely like a, just more participatory budgeting development. I would love to see. So we can move forward with putting this into the work plan. I want to flag that when I see things that are more of like recommending a tool or a, um, or co-developing things, to me that feels like a work group because there would be substantial work outside um, or sort of needing to be done on the side. So I think when we do this iteration and add those, we probably then suggest that it happens in a work group to be able to kind of produce these deliverables. I mean, I, again, we can leave this as a thing to propose to the broader group, but I do think that that's important and we should maybe have that work group start um, when the budget season is nigh because it will help increase attention and eyes on that process so that they can be engaged. All right, anything before we move on to our last two? I was just gonna, it's a comment that we don't need to sort out now, but um, if the city's leaning into that kind of work of wanting it to be participatory, I mean, I think that's great, Zach. I just, mm -hmm. if the push and pull dynamics are there, you're not trying to make it more accessible. And I know, I. Just where 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 is the, the best use of our energy if, if um we're just gonna get pushed back. But if they're into it, great. Because this would I I would suspect you'd want something like this to kind of continue on and GTAC will not be on around forever. So what's sustainable with the political climate unknown? that's kind of a fair question to point out as we um we can point GTAC members to that point money um and put and then and make these changes. Does that work? Great. All right. This is like our last meeting one. Uh mayor, city administrator and service delivery. And Zach again, you are the person who is here who also did this because Lori couldn't make it today. And I know Lori took a look at this already as well and kind of gave her thumbs up. 
Um, but Zach, is there any art, do you want to talk about any of the changes you suggested and what you think we should do to move forward? I'm realizing that I might have uh, wrote this earlier related to the voted voter education that I uh, wrote this morning, but just kind of this like improving uh, number four, for example, recommend the creation of a resource guide for general public that is accessible online and is in physical formats, things that like we can have a conversation about it maybe in uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes and understand, provide an information uh, that like of what it would take to develop such a thing and mm -hmm. then make a recommendation and it can go no further than like, I think that's a really attainable task that doesn't have to be a work plan per se, it is a recommendation. Um, and then the other addition was request clarity regarding Portland, uh, the role of Portland solutions and how the public can engage, provide feedback. This kind of relates to the district coalitions to a certain extent, because <clears throat> that's kind of funneled into the Portland solutions. But um, I am I want to continue for us to put pressure on the city to like be transparent and proactive in how it's defining Portland solutions within this but, um, organizational draft because I know well beyond the organizational drafts because I know that the draft is really kind of a starting point and then it's they need to develop kind of a strategy and an understanding of what it's going to accomplish so that they can effectively budget it and so we can help advocate that they are having those conversations engaging with the public so that it reflects the needs the city is um city needs to provide through through this kind of like medium. Thanks, Zach. Bill? Well, thank you. I, I'm real attentive to the recommendations that there be some lucid documents that a non-expert can understand for budget or, you know, or, you know the city organizations. Do we know if there are any examples that other municipalities have developed? I mean, you know, some where you could say, well, we want you to do what um, another city or town or government has done. I mean, I think I kind of want to take a tough step back because I think this might help address your comments, Zach and, and Bill, is if we think about kind of laying out the general work plan for the subcommittee, we can kind of envelop the three of your suggestions, which is around providing recommendations, like a recommended resource guide that's created, um, asking for clarity regarding the Portland solutions, um, and sort of like even doing research. So that's something the subcommittee could do. And, and maybe we could take a step back and have just maybe rewrite, you know, two and four to just generally be that this committee kind of looks at those things that are happening um, and then recommends to GTAC that they provide recommendations or create a resource guide. So I'm, I'm guessing, so I just, I guess part of me is just wondering if those are tasks that maybe aren't major tasks, but are things that the subcommittee would want to decide to vote on and to do. Um, and maybe a larger task to be able to kind of look at those things gets us like the buy-in of, of the entire subcommittee and the committee. Does that make sense? Is that confusing? Does y'all look confused? <laughs> I'm a little confused. So I'm just trying to, I mean, I, I realize that this work plan is also supposedly gonna, I think, reflect what we're really asking and tasking the subcommittees and, and work groups to do. And so this is kind of more of a um, visionary document, in my opinion, like the the concrete deliverables might ultimately change over time, depending on the research or whatever, but it's something that can like at least be an agenda setter for these early conversations within subcommittees. And so, like talking to what Bill was was suggesting, I think is 
the re like the the input, if you will, to the deliverable or the task of a recommendation. I guess um, I'm wondering if we're getting too into the weeds of what exactly folks are going to be doing. So if, if we had something that was more enabling folks to be able to explore what the subcommittee wanted to do in regards to to bringing those recommendations through. Um, but it sounds like that's not quite resonating with folks. So in the interest of also wanting to get to our last piece, I'm wondering if anyone has anything else to say, including a proposal for what we could do to kind of pose those, those questions to finishing this to the committee for next week. June, I understand what you're saying, and I, I did not write this piece, so, you know, want Zach's um, thoughts to be encompassed somewhere, but I, all I would say is the consistency um, from memory of looking at the work plan is around advice, and however Terry had a comment right at the jump, and I'm sure it's not there anymore, hey, can we reorganize this in two ways? We're mostly advising or supporting. I forget what his two. Mm -hmm. So I think the language in this work plan should be that. Um, and then I agree with what June's saying to, to um, your point, June, around like the details of recommending this or requesting this could be within the subcommittee work plan. So we're gonna have another shot at writing this. And I think we could do a thing where we don't lose your thoughts, Zach, on really focusing on things that will impact the community, but also kind of zooming out. And so we can pay attention to those pieces for the next set of final comments. Yeah, we could maybe do like an EG or something like that, mm -hmm. like, you know, that way it's not too prescriptive, but gives a, gives an idea of what it could look like. Yeah. So I'm wondering if we can spend the last four minutes on definitions and measures of success. And then if Zach and Bill, did you, if you have five minutes to go over to talk about the presentation to GTAC, we could do that. Do you, Bill? Fine with me. Good. Okay. Julia, I want to get handed over to you. Did you have something? No, I was going to recommend we move to the presentation. Oh, if folks can Perfect. stay. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, actually, let's move to the presentation. I think this definition of measures of, of success, Destiny and Lori have emailed their input, and we can um, have you all. Um, uh, take a look at that with the, the draft so that we can kind of get to at least a little bit of the presentation. Um, let me share the screen. So the co-chair said, let's have, let's have this item for 40 minutes. So I think that'll be great to kind of have a lot of time to look through this. Um, here's sort of a proposal of what I think we should cover. And I want to hear from y'all what you think is missing. Um, and then who would like, maybe two of you could present. Um, and, you know, we could work with you offline to, to put those slides together. So the first one is background, who was on the committee? How did you get, how do we get to the work plan and sort of the vision for the work plan? So some things I heard from our meeting is that wanting a functional regularly referenced tool to help us stay focused, um, provide clear timelines. I heard mention of a Gantt chart to make sure we're, we're knowing the work that's done what's a, and what's ahead. Um, and the next piece, you know, I think it would be good to go over the work plan structure. So when folks are looking at it, this is the goal, the major tasks, this is the form where we think the input would, would be best sort of suited to be deliberated on, and then the timing. Um, and then some draft discussion, discussion questions is generally what works, what's missing, what should be improved so that we could get to um, a final thing that's approved. And then lastly would be our next steps, would be, which would be um, uh, what our major updates are gonna be to get this ready for GTAC approval. And then um, we're gonna have to update our schedule as GTAC to make sure that we are following 
the plan. So for example, if facilities is coming in, uh, maybe then instead of having that be a GTAC meeting, that then becomes a subcommittee meeting. Uh, they all will be, you know, fully public meetings. Um, they're just going to be, we're just going to be following this plan and sticking to the different forms that we had outlined. All right, so that's the presentation outline. What do y'all think? So are, are we, um, will we be presenting it roughly? And I mean, I know that there's cleanup and stuff that, that you and Julia are going to provide and do, which is really helpful. I appreciate that. Are we going to provide it in this kind of format or are we going to try to create a visual tool and like get to the an end product of a Gantt chart or I don't know, something that could be um, map our work onto the timelines of this what the city is doing so that we can kind of um, help the scheduling piece, but also like for the public who are maybe interested in GTAC meetings, okay, well, they're not going to touch voter education until January or something like that. Um, so they would be able to know that a little bit from just looking at our Gantt chart. I don't know if that's, I, I realize there's like time and capacity, but I'm also just happy to build that if we've got the inputs, but I just don't see us having the inputs yet of like knowing those times. So. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, but for the full committee meeting next week, we need to send the materials tomorrow. So I would I would recommend we send it in a cleaned up version of the format you all have been working in. And then um, when we get to the point that the committee approves a work plan, probably in November, that then we make other materials and formats that might be more usable. Got it. That clarity, that clarifies my, my concern. June, Julia. Oh, sorry, Bill. Can I pause you just for one second? Because I know money can't stay. Um, if you wanted to provide a last comment before you headed out. Sorry, Bill. Oh, God. Start my phone. Um, I I think that looks fine. Thanks, June. I am most concerned about time. Um, it, we've spent an hour today, and then um previously, and it takes just our group to over. Um, like right now. So that's my biggest concern. We can't make everybody read the work plan prior, but I would um, like if we could just do a strong encourage in the materials that go out tomorrow that um, I almost want to set the context and the table and then mm -hmm. back to the committee to say, and maybe we say, we'll give you five minutes. Mm -hmm seven minutes to review this, you know, of the 40, if you didn't, and then ask them to make questions and have questions because I don't think it does anything. I don't, we need to troubleshoot. I, I would say that's the setup of this meeting rather than us um, talking to and saying, this is what we developed. And because I think that could take the full 40 minutes of each section. Okay. I see a lot of agreement money, and I think we could take it that direction. Um, and I want to honor your time too. Um, yeah, sorry, y'all. I do have to jump. I um, I'm happy to kind of just be the person that at least is saying, "Hey, I was the one that made the motion." Um, that this should be iterative. I mean, one other suggestion I would want to make is whenever a subcommittee comes back to the full committee and reporting whatever they did that they ground us in their mm -hmm. section, whatever it was. So we do actually look at this document and it's not something that we present next week and then we don't ever look at it again. Um, and we can make that suggestion, you know, like I can make that suggestion, um, let me know um, and I'm happy to help there. I just don't know if it would need to be like Bill and I just saying, well, this is what we created and here's section one and two and three and four and here are all the parts. Um, so I don't know, that's that's my two cents and more for whatever it's worth. Great, thank you. Well, we'll all be right. back with you after this. All right. Okay, thanks. Good to see y'all. Good to see you. Um, Zach or Bill, do you have a suggestion of how you given money thoughts that she shared of how you feel like 
this time should is best used by the committee. Uh, my comments uh, was going to be similar to Monty's. In particular, if we go over the major sections, I think Monty, Zach, and possibly me as well, uh, need to figure out how to briefly describe mm -hmm. and, and not just read the whole document, <laughs> which would take all the time. And I'm brainstorming, but maybe we create the expectation that when you send this out, we ask individuals to read it. We're not going to go over it in detail, but establish an expectation that individuals do some homework to read it ahead of time. And I'm wondering if we even want them to ask the individuals to submit comments ahead of time. I, I'm not insisting on that, but I, I'm trying to figure out how to make this work within a you know, a sync amount of time. Thanks, Bill. I mean, I would love to have comments ahead of time because then we can, we can structure the time more effectively. I mean, I, I worry that the discussion is just last thought is like, I worry that the discussion is just going to be largely driven by the two people who might have read it or our work group trying to fill the time because it's a lot of silence because people are scrambling reading it while we're in the meeting. If you send it out ahead of time, I, I'm brainstorming again, would it be helpful or if there were a link so that individuals could post comments on it before the meeting? So we can see them, establish the expectation, please submit your comments before the meeting so we can highlight them during the meeting. I'll speak to this just practically. I would advise no, um, having 20 people with one link to a shared document is very challenging to kind of make sense, but um, I can invite comments ahead of time. I can strongly encourage folks to read it. It's really not very long. And when it's a clean version, it's going to be even shorter. Um, and I think we could have the co-chairs check in if people actually did read it. We could do the pause, if not, that money suggested. Like, I think that there's ways. And, you know, if I ask for comments ahead of time, I might get them from three people, probably not everybody, but they might give us a good sense of what some of the issues are. So I guess hearing all of what y'all say, are saying, here's a proposal. So we <clears throat> have just, I think it'd be important to, for folks to know who was on the, the work plan committee or the work group and sort of the vision, which is like the, right, having a functional work plan that can be referenced as a tool and then providing the five minute pause and then teeing up the first questions that you ask folks for feedback on would be the things that we talked about. So in a way we could say, the things that we felt like we needed the most input on are these three things. And if anything else comes up, people can bring those up to be able to really just couch it within what do you need to change in this work plan to be able to approve it? Because I think it's already, you know, I think all of us would say it's in a state where we can move forward with our work. Um, but there are those three or four things that you need a larger um, set of eyes on to move forward on. That makes sense as, as I hear it, because then we're focusing on the discussion and, and can try to keep it within you know, our time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, I just want to make sure that we can give clarity as to how this is substantively different and an improvement upon our community engagement work plan that we've developed, but also the like letters that we've received, um, both in the like original proposal of what this committee is supposed to do, but also the clarification from the count the council. So um like there's gonna that's gonna be large in large part what my money is talking about. Is the vision and the like how how to utilize it. So I'm wondering if um 
I think both both of you, Beck and Bill, have been consistent through the three meetings. Um, we could, so I think money would be great to speak on the vision and we can kind of prep her on that. And I'm wondering if either of you would be uh, kind of the uh, kind of co-presenter in this case of just like helping to ground folks and then um, helping to guide our questions. And I think I'm kind of looking at you, Zach, because I think the three things that we want to bring up or those points are kind of around the things that you have suggested. suggested. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to see who, I think Money said she would be, you know, interested in, in kind of talking, but if, if, if either of you could join her. I'm fine doing that. I just realized that I don't want to be seen as like a person who's constantly talking in these meetings. So if it's if it's useful, I'm happy to because I'm the proposals that we're looking for feedback on were my own. So that I'm fine with with sharing it in that respect. Okay. Um, I can circle back with the both of you in, in terms of sort of this modified presentation um, to make sure that y'all are good with it. Um, and then we can do that for the 17th. June, that sounds good. I also was going to suggest, Zach, you've given a, a lot of thought. So uh, I, I think it I, I think it'd be very good if you're you're the prime presenter. If your concern about, you know, become, you know, appearing to be the sole person, if you'd like me to chime in on a subset of something, I'm happy to do so, but I don't insist on it. What, whatever you think is appropriate. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'll just, I need to work on the talking points to uplift all the different contributions in it. Cause it, I, you know, it's just going to be the appearance of like, the proposals coming from me um, will be weird, to, but I, I I just need to think about it a little bit more. Yeah, I don't want to belabor, and I know we're late. Um, but I I might be where Zach is. I almost think it's straight. Like I'm not sure that there's work group consensus on Zach's recommendations. Mm -hmm. or that people have even read them or thought about them. And so it doesn't feel as much as a product of this work group as it does Zach's recommended changes to the work group's draft. Unless you talked about these, I apologize, it wasn't at your first two meetings. So, you know, totally correct me, but like the work group presentation as much as possible should be work group work. And then the follow-up discussion is people's recommended changes, including people who served on the work group. Julia, instead of using the word recommendations, can we say th these are changes for consideration or proposals for consideration? Sure, I'm just, questioning whether another work group member should articulate those rather than the proposer if they're coming in the initial work group's presentation. I see. Yes. And so I'd say, uh, Zach, if, you know, there are some points where you'd like me to be the messenger, shall we say, you know, I'm part of the group too. So I, I'm supportive of them. You know, I'd be happy to do so. But again, what you think works best for, you know, for the sequence or for the flow? Well, I think I. I just I I think Julia articulated my concern right, which is but just to try to use it in my own words um, to maybe overly belabor, belabor the point. But like, if I'm presenting it, then it comes off as like a recommendation versus more of just a proposal. Um. Yeah, so it sounds like we probably, because of those are heavily used, Act, I'm wondering, Bill, if you would step in to present with money instead. And so that way you can call on Zach to, like, you know, talk a little bit more, provide additional clarification to his proposals. All right. 
Good, good, and that means I'll want to talk with Manny uh, or Monty beforehand. So, <laughs> okay, we'll make sure that you two um, have whatever we create that kind of hopefully reflects that, and y'all can change it up a bit if you want your discussion to change. Um, and then Zach, you, sounds like you'll just be teed up to, to provide more information if needed. Great. So, so, so June, you're putting together an updated work plan, correct? Mm -hmm. Julie and I will share, we'll share that with us. Then I'm envisioning I'll talk with Monty and Zach. You know, we, we can have a well, we can have a five sum or a threesome with June and Julie, <laughs> as you see. And uh, I, I'm just not looking at my calendar now. Uh, when do we give this presentation? Next, the 17th, next Tuesday. Okay, okay, good. There's breathing time. Good, not tomorrow. <laughs> yes. There's breathing time. However, we will send out the draft work plan and the slide deck tomorrow. So it's Fair. one week before the meeting. Good. And hopefully we'll just give enough flexibility on the slides to highlight stuff for you to be able to kind of figure out how you wanna present some of these things or time allocation. That will be helpful. And may I say, June and Juliet, even in starting this work plan, you enable our work group to go a lot further and develop it than we would have if we had had to start from scratch. So we're here for. All right. All right, y'all. We will send that. Keep an eye out for that by the end of the day tomorrow. And I think this sends our work group meeting number three. Thank you. Thanks, Bob.